Welcome in and thanks for joining us for the WHHI Daily News, where we strive to bring you more low country news more often. I'm Bob Stevens. Got your fireworks yet? You may be standing in line if you don't. The long holiday weekend ahead, a record number of fireworks expected to be shot off on this first wide open 4th of July in quite a while. The 4th, of course, on Tuesday, many people also taking off Monday the 3rd. There is expected to be a 25% increase in commercial display spending nationally, up to about a half billion dollars total, and nearly two and a half billion in consumer fireworks sold nationwide. That's another huge increase over recent years. Maybe by the next 4th of July weekend, we'll start to see improvements being suggested this week to Hilton Head's major parks. We told you about the architect's plans for upgrade to Chaplin Park yesterday. Crossings Park, just south of the Cross Island Parkway on the island, could be getting a couple of new baseball and softball fields to add to the ones currently in the park. A new bike pump track with a picnic pavilion, biking and walking trails, and Yes, parking for nearly 400 cars. Final plans expected to be before the town council later this summer. Fourth of July weekend, probably a nice time to measure how we measure up in tourist amenities like bicycling compared to other similar sized cities. According to the People for Bikes group, Hilton Head Island may be not rated as highly as we might think. Their city rankings rate Hilton Head in the 86th percentile nationwide. That's pretty good. But they only rank the island 132nd best out of nearly 1,000 cities smaller than 50,000 people. The rankings measure bike access to things like retail shopping, transit hubs, core services, and recreational areas like parks. The ratings do show Hilton Head doing much better than Savannah, Charleston, or Myrtle Beach. With all the money the state legislature spent in the recently completed session, you hope some of it will help raise the state's rating for our kids. The Annie Casey Foundation rates the state the 10th worst in their kids count data profile overall, 11th worst for education, fourth worst on health care for our younger ones. We did improve slightly in a couple of subcategories like kids without health insurance, teenage births, and children living in high poverty areas. But we still got worse in children who are dying and teens who are dying per capita and young kids not in schools among the counties within the state. Beaufort County did the seventh best, Jasper County just barely into the bottom half. And while we hear about how poorly our state rates in many health care metrics, MUSC's Sean Jenkins Children's Hospital is being recognized as one of the best children's hospitals in the country, according to U.S. News & World Report. MUSC has moved up to ninth best overall in the southeast region, but fourth nationally in cardiology and heart surgery and among the top 50 in cancer therapy, orthopedics, and neonatology. For more information on these and other Lowcountry so stories, we invite you to visit the sources listed on your screen. Let's talk a little local sports as we head into the big holiday weekend. Justin Jarrett has an update. Hey, it's time for Last Night in the Loco on WHHI, powered by LocoSports.com. The South Carolina Athletic Directors Association released the final Carlisle Cup standings for the 2022-23 school year last week, presenting a quantifiable listing of the top all-around high school sports programs in the state. And three area schools cracked the top 10 in their classifications. Buford High School recorded the highest finish among loco schools, tying for seventh place in Class 3A after a remarkable year that included the first football state title for a Buford County public school since the 1940s. May River finished eighth in Class 4A behind consistently competitive programs across the board, with Hilton Head High right behind in ninth, buoyed by a state title in girls tennis this fall. Bluffton High School didn't look far for its next head softball coach, promoting former assistant Rachel Zedes to take over for William Rose. Zedes was the starting shortstop at Ryder University and has been a math teacher and assistant volleyball and softball coach at Bluffton for two years. The Bobcats will look to reload after sending four seniors to play at the next level this spring. And on the links, we have two loco golfers through to the match play portion of the North and South Amateur up in Pinehurst, North Carolina. HHI native and Alabama Crimson Tide golfer Jonathan Grizz earned the number three seed and was taking on number 30 seed Kazuma Kabori. And May River alum and Clemson Tiger Andrew Swanson is the number eight seed and was facing number 25 Colin Salima. For Loco Sports and WHHI, I'm Justin Jarrett. Until next time, go Loco.
Been a lot hotter in other places in the country, but certainly warm enough here. How does that work as we head into the weekend, Maria Soden? Thanks, Bob. Yep, so taking a look ahead, it is going to be a hot one this weekend. We're supposed to have a high heat index with a real field getting up to 105. Also, we're going to have a UV index of a 12 this weekend. So if you're going to be outside, do be careful. Taking a look at Friday, it's going to be sunny with Hillman having a high of 87, a low of 75. Bluffton's have a high of 91, a low of 73. And Beaufort's going to have a high of 91 and a low of 73. The sunrise for Friday is going to be at 619 and sunset's going to be at 833. Taking a look at the beach tides, high tide's going to be at 658 a.m. and low tide's going to be at 215 p.m. Taking a look into the rest of the weekend, a little bit into next week. Saturday is going to be sunny to partly cloudy with a few scattered thunderstorms throughout the day, but should be clearing up by the evening. Highs in the 90s, lows in the 70s. Come Sunday, it's going to be partly cloudy with a couple thunderstorms throughout the afternoon, and we may see another one later in the evening. Highs in the 90s, lows in the 70s. And then come Monday, it's going to be sunny to partly cloudy, again with thunderstorms throughout the afternoon, and they may continue on into the evening. Highs in the 90s, lows in the 70s. That's it for today. Let's head back to the desk. Coming up a little later on in the show, we're going to talk about some opportunities for you to stay indoors and cool and yet still be entertained this weekend. But up next, the Habitat for Humanity operations north and south of the Broad have gotten together. We'll explain what that means for all of us and for those who want a new house when we come back. 